name is Dr. Dmitry Tsvetov and today I'm going to speak to you about um, immediate dental implants. I think this is a very important topic to discuss and to have um, an understanding of because um, as you're going to see in just a minute, there are basically two ways to put in the dental implants immediately after the extraction and sometime after the extraction. So I hope today's video will um, um, be able to answer some questions that you may have about these two particular approaches and allow you to have a better understanding about the topic. So when it comes to placing dental implants, there are basically two approaches, like I mentioned before. The first approach is what we call a staged approach. Basically, um, it is done in two stages. It means that the tooth is extracted. Extraction site is allowed to heal for about three to four months. At that point, a dental implant is placed um, it heals in place for another three months, which results in the total treatment time of about six to seven months. The other approach is what we call the immediate approach, which means that if the tooth is extracted, the dental implant is placed immediately, the extraction site and the dental implant heal together, and uh, the total treatment time for this particular procedure is about three months as opposed to six to seven uh, with the staged approach. The advantages of the staged approach are that, in my opinion, a more precise placement of the implant is possible. And that is because the location of the bone and more importantly, the volume of the bone is known precisely. The site has had the time to heal and we know exactly where the bone is and how much of the bone is there. The disadvantage is that the patient basically undergoes two procedures instead of one and therefore this results in uh, two recovery periods, uh, one after the extraction and one after the implant placement, although the recovery after the implant placement is a lot easier and a lot more and a lot more easily tolerated by the patient than after the extraction. Um, and of course, a big disadvantage is, is that with this particular approach, the total treatment time is six to seven months as opposed to only three months with the immediate implant placement. With the immediate approach, the advantage is of course that it's one single procedure. The tooth is removed and the implant is placed immediately and there is one recovery period and the whole treatment time is about three to four months. The disadvantage, and you're going to see that in just a minute, is that some teeth are better candidates for immediate implants than others. And this particular procedure can be better applied to some teeth as opposed to, as opposed to other teeth. Um, the rule of thumb is that um, when it comes to teeth, pr pretty much any tooth is a candidate, but some teeth are better candidates for immediate implants than others. Um, another disadvantage is the cost. When you're doing an immediate implant, the, um, uh, the upfront cost for the patient is greater because they're expected to pay for the extraction and for the dental implant placement at the same time as opposed to with the staged approach where they get to uh, split their payments basically into two, first paying for the extraction and three to four months later paying for the implant. And another big disadvantage, and this is truly the largest disadvantage in my opinion, is that when um, you do an immediate implant, you're never quite sure how and to what extent the bone is likely to heal. What I mean by that is uh, the extraction side of a tooth remodels over time. So the bone volume and uh, size change quite a bit. So while the imp an immediate implant may be absolutely beautifully positioned and placed at the time of the immediate implant placement, as the bone remodels around it, the bone may actually recede around the implant, 
resulting in the implant uh, showing through the uh, th uh, through the gum tissue after the after the healing process. So this picture, I think, illustrates really well why some teeth are much better candidates for immediate implants than others. As you can see, a dental implant is essentially a replacement for the root of the tooth. And when we look at this picture here, we can see that there are teeth that are single-rooted and there are teeth that are multi-rooted. So generally, generally speaking, the premolars and canines and incisors are single-rooted teeth, which are much more ideally uh, situated for the immediate implant, as opposed to the molar teeth, which are two and sometimes three-rooted when it comes to maxillary teeth, and trying to put in an immediate implant while um, um, working in between two or three large openings left behind by the roots of the multi-rooted teeth is extremely challenging. Another important concept to understand is that uh, when one is placing an immediate implant, we are, we are dependent on the apical bone, meaning the bone beyond where the root of the tooth was to achieve primary stability. The implant, generally speaking, is a lot narrower and smaller than the root of, of the tooth, and so to be able to position the implant in the extraction socket in a stable manner, we are dependent on the bone beyond the apex or apical bone to, to stabilize the implant and to prevent it from, from uh, the movement. So, as you can see here in this example, there is a good amount of apical bone above where the root of the tooth was to allow for the placement of this implant. This, the stability of this immediate implant comes from this area over here because again over here there is no bone, this is a fresh extraction socket and so the only thing keeping this implant stable and in place is the bone right over here. Why am I um, trying to explain this? Um, this is going to become apparent when we look at the particular local anatomy around the, around the teeth. When we talk about the maxillary or the upper teeth, we always have to be concerned about um, a structure which we call maxillary sinus. Maxillary sinus is essentially an empty space above the teeth. It's in this blue area, um, on either side of the nose. So as you can see here, the premolars, canines and the incisors, the sinus doesn't really come into play and there is a lot of apical bone to be able to anchor the immediate implant. But as we get more to the back or further posterior, the sinus drops down quite a bit and there is not a lot of apical bone available here to be able to anchor in the immediate implant. When we talk about the lower teeth or the, or, um, or the mandibular teeth, uh, we always have to be concerned about the nerve that runs inside of the lower jaw. This is what we call inferior alve alveolar nerve, which is a nerve responsible for a sensation of feeling to the lower lip and chin area. And we have one on the right side and we have one on the left side as well. This picture clearly shows that the nerve is right in the vicinity of where the roots of those um, mandibular molar teeth are. And this varies to a certain extent between the patients. There are patients in whom the inferior alveolar nerve runs a lot deeper, but there are also patients in whom the inferior alveolar nerve runs a lot higher. And of course, because we spoke about the fact that we are dependent on the uh, amount of the apical bone available for the stability of the immediate implant, if the inferior alveolar nerve is very high, there is a huge risk in terms of placing the immediate implant because if we try to engage the apical bone, 
where the inferior alveolar nerve is, there is a risk of injury to the nerve, which is going to result in patient having the numbness to the lower lip and chin area. And so you have to be very careful and evaluate each particular clinical situation in a lot of detail to be able to determine whether or not an immediate implant is feasible and what are the risks associated with placing the um, immediate implant, especially in the molar area for the top and for the bottom teeth. So when we talk about immediate implants, I do think that it's a viable treatment option uh, for specific teeth, uh, but one has to take into consideration um, the tooth itself, meaning, you know, if it's a premolar or a canine or an incisor, those are typically speaking better candidates for immediate implant placement, as opposed to the molar teeth, where the local anatomy indeed uh, plays a huge role in determining whether or not an immediate implant can be placed. And I still do believe that the staged or the delayed implant placement allows for a more precise placement of the implant because the volume and the amount of the bone is clearly, clearly seen and visible as opposed to an immediate implant where the practitioner has to guess to a certain extent how the bone is likely to heal and the guesses occasionally um, are not correct which results in a less than um, ideal aesthetic and functional outcome for the case. Um, I think this is all that I want to address on this particular topic. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, my name is Dr. Dmitry Tsvetov and I do thank you for your time.